everyone, welcome to another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne Laflam. And I'm Chris Costa. So Chris, what would you like to discuss today? Well, last time we talked about um, making data collection entries. Um, mm -hmm. I thought maybe today we could talk about what happens if I have a user that needs to be working on multiple jobs at the same time or multiple machines at the same time? Sure. Um, a couple different things you can do. If you mm -hmm. have a user that's working on maybe two or three jobs at the exact same time, maybe they're in pre-press and they're working on design for a couple different jobs. Sure. Concurrently, we mm -hmm. have a concurrent button in data collections that they can use and enter all the different jobs that they're working right. on. Um, or if you, maybe you have a pressman that's uh, got a gang run that they're working on, so maybe they're ganging two, three, four jobs. They can clock entries against the gang job to, to handle the entries for mm -hmm. all of the jobs that they're getting. Okay. okay. Uh, can we look at an example maybe? Sure. Okay. Let's start with concurrent. So I'm going to go into data collections and let's go to this EPMS user who is in my prepress department and we're going to start them off by um, clocking into a one job, the first job. So I'm going to click on production, select my job that I'm working on, select my component, select the process I'm working on, and the cost time, the cost code, regular, overtime, double time, and click OK. So now I'm clocked into that first job. Now if I'm working on a second job at the same time, I can hit the concurrent button, and then click on Add Entry, and add a second job. I'll select this job. Again, select the component, the process, the cost code, and click OK. Now what will happen is, if say I want to print my time card out, here I can sh um, see that when it prints out the time card you'll see that it'll have both jobs and it'll show the second job with a C next to it meaning concurrent and when it fills in the time for the day after um, they clock out of the processes it will fill in the time but it will subtract the concurrent time so that the time card will only record the actual hours they were there and won't double it because okay. they were working on two jobs and they okay. can hit the concurrent button for as many jobs as they're working on at any particular mm -hmm. time Okay, very good. Okay. Um, can we take a look at an example of a gang run? Sure. I'm going to close out of here and let's go down to the press department. And we'll go down to uh, this Joe Elapsed Time employee and we'll click on the production button. Now here what I can do is I, if I'm working on a gang run, I can check the gang run box and I can go to gang jobs button here. And I could create a gang, or if one has already been created, I can come to the predefined and select a predefined gang run job. Now I have a job here, 4075, that is made up of two jobs, 4073 and 4074. So I'm going to select that, click OK, and then I can go ahead and, and clock into the rest of the job just like I would any other job. I'll select the process I'm working on, the time that I'm working on. I can enter uh, the quantity. Now this is an elapsed time employee, so I'm just going to be entering an elapsed time. So say I did a, a quantity of 2,000 impressions, and say I worked on this for 60 minutes. And I can click OK here. And let's enter a material too. I'm going to come down to material code, select the paper I was working on, regular time. And it automatically put in the usage that I entered based on the quantity I had entered in the production entry, and I click OK. And I'm going to say no here. So now I've entered an entry against the gang job mm -hmm. before. Okay, now if you do that, jobs. what happens with the entries? Are they recorded against the planning job, or are they recorded against the individual jobs? They're actually recorded against the individual jobs. Let's go into job costing and take a look at okay. that. Okay, yeah. So I'm going to close here. And go into job costing. And go down to Joe elapsed time employee. Now you can see here that the production entry says gang run. And it has the time and quantity that was entered. If I switch over to materials, let's start there for a minute first. You'll see that when it entered the materials, it put 1,000 against each job. So it knew, I entered 2,000 for the quantity. It knew the job was 50% for each mm -hmm. um, individual job, so it divided the material yep. based on that percentage. Okay. Now for the labor, though when you look at the actual labor entry here, it shows gang run. If you look at the actual job costing report, I'll, put, I'll start off by looking at the planning job report, and you'll see that there's actually nothing recorded against the planning job. If I look at each individual job in the gang run, 
you'll see that it put, again, a quantity of 1,000 and half an hour instead of the full hour. Right. And then it, you'll also see the material entry here. Okay. So it divided it, both the material and the production entries, against each individual job. So it makes it easy to enter. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes the production sense. Production entries. Yeah. Okay. okay. Uh, one of the questions I might have is, what if an entry gets recorded in data collection and it's wrong, and someone yep. has to make a correction? That's a good question because you can't correct anything in data collections. Data collections is for entering only. Job costing is the place you would go to make corrections. Okay. So to do mm -hmm. that, um, let's say uh, this person, Chris Costa, he entered um, an entry here for typesetting, and you know say the time was incorrect on it. You can come in here and click on edit and then you can edit anything you need to in here. Maybe he forgot to enter the quantity that he that he worked on. You could, you could change the quantity here. Um, if the time was incorrect, he really finished at uh, 1747 and clocked out in the, with the wrong time. You can change that here and it will update it in job costing and then update the job costing reports as well. Okay. You can do the same thing for material. Let's go over and look at a material entry, and let's come down to uh, material entry here. So say this quantity used was 1,000, but it should have been 1,500. I can edit the entry here. I can enter 1,500, click OK. It will tell me it's changed. It'll also ask me if I want to adjust inventory. I can say yes here, and it puts in a 500, negative 500 adjustment to mm -hmm. adjust the inventory and deduct the additional amount. Okay. And I see you could also change the material code there, I, su I suppose, if the wrong material was entered? Yes, you could. You could change mm -hmm. the material code, and it will do the adjusting entries to the two different material codes as well. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Good, good. point. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? No, I think that was good. That was good. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you for joining us for another episode of EPMS Tech Talk. I'm Joanne Laflamme. And I'm Chris Costa. Please look forward for more to come.